morning. And welcome in Christ on this nice sunny day. We've got some good rain now. The sun's going to make it all grow. I hope your lawnmower blades are sharpened. So, um, please turn to page two in the bulletin uh, for our opening hymn. And if you want the full harmony, it's on, in the hymn book in 657. Our opening hymn is Rise, O Son of Righteousness, and I invite you to stand. confession and forgiveness in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit Amen. <clears throat> Almighty God to whom all hearts are open all desires known and from whom no secrets are hid cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord Amen, Amen. let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As they called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
us pray. O oh God, form the minds of your faithful people into your one will. Make us love what you command and desire what you promise, that amid all the changes of this world, our hearts may be fixed where true joy is found. Your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. Our first reading this morning is from Acts 16, verses 16 to 34. One day, as we were going to the place of prayer, we met a slave girl who had a spirit of divination and brought her owners a great deal of money by fortune-telling. While she followed Paul and us, she would cry out, These men are slaves of the Most High God, who proclaim to you a way of salvation. She kept doing this for many days, but Paul, very much annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I order you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out of her that very hour. But when her owners saw that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace before the authorities. When they had brought them before the magistrates, they said, these men are disturbing our city. They are Jews and are advocating customs that are not lawful for us Romans to adopt or observe. The crowd joined in attacking them, and the magistrates had them stripped of their clothing and ordered them to be beaten with rods. After they had given them a severe flogging, they threw them into prison and ordered the jailer to keep them securely. Following these instructions, he put them in the innermost cell and fastened their feet in stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was an earthquake, so violent that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were unfastened. When the jailer woke up and saw the prison doors wide open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, since he supposed that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted in a loud voice, Do not harm yourself, for we are all here. The jailer called for lights, and rushing in, he fell down, trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them outside and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They answered, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. They spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all those who were in his house. At that same hour of the night, he took them and washed their wounds. Then he and his entire family were baptized without delay. He brought them up into the house and set food before them, and he and his entire household rejoiced that he had become a believer in God. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. <clears throat> Please read responsibly with me, responsibly with me, Psalm 97. The Lord reigns, let the earth rejoice, let the multitude of the isles be glad. Clouds and darkness surround the Lord. Righteousness and justice are foundation of God's throne. Fire goes before the Lord, burning up enemies on every side. Lightning lights up the world, the earth sees and trembles. The, mount the mountains melt like wax, before the Lord of all the earth. The heavens declare your righteousness, O Lord, and all the people see your glory. Confounded be all who worship carved images and delight in false gods. Bow down before the Lord, all you gods. Zion hears and glad, and the cities of Judah rejoice because of your judgments, O Lord. For you are the Lord, most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. You who love the Lord hate evil. God guards the lives of the saints and rescues them from the hand of the wicked. Light dawns for the righteous and joy for the honest of heart. Re rejoice in the Lord, you righteous, and give thanks to God's holy name. 
And the second reading this morning is from Revelations 22. See, I am coming soon. My reward is with me to repay according to everyone's work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes so that they will have the right to the tree of life and may enter into the city by the gates. It is I, Jesus, who sent my angel to you with this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the descendant of David, the bright morning star. The spirit says and the bride says, come and let everyone who hears say, come and let everyone who is thirsty, come. Let everyone who wishes take the water of life as a gift. The one who testifies to these things says, Surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with all the saints. Amen. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. that in my pocket. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus prayed. I ask no, not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one. As you, Father, are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given them, so that they may be one as we are one. I and them and you and me, that they may become, become completely one, so that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I desire that those also whom you have given me may be with me where I am, to see my glory which you have given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world does not know you, but I know you, and these know that you have sent me. I made your name known to them, and I will make it known, so that the love with which you have loved me may be in them, and I in them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Christ. Please be seated, and I invite the children up front for a children's sermon, and Sandy to come lead that. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> All right. Well, I brought with me something. What is that? Do you know what that is? What is it? But what, it, what, do I, what is this whole thing called? A puzzle. Oh, here she comes. I knew she was here. Okay. <laughs> I gotta love it. <laughs> Well, what I like about a puzzle is it challenges me. Because this one is a thousand piece puzzle and when I did it, it challenged me to really use my brain and to work hard and to make it complete, to finish it all and have a whole complete puzzle. But there's one thing that gets me really upset when I'm doing a puzzle. What do you think that might be? What? What? Well, that could be too, but also if I have a piece missing. If I get my whole puzzle done and there's like a piece in the very middle missing, it doesn't make me happy. I hunt and hunt for that piece. Sometimes I find it, sometimes I don't. But it gets me upset. Well, today in our reading, Jesus is saying a prayer. And you know what? That prayer is for all of us. It's a prayer for you guys, 
and them and for me. Okay? In this prayer, Jesus asks that all his people, like you and me, are all one. Okay? Does that mean that we're all alike if we're all one? Well, no, it doesn't mean that at all. We're all different. Some have blonde hair, some have brown hair, some are boys, some are girls. Some have hair and some don't, you're right. <laughs> we're all different, and that's a good thing because it makes that world more interesting and more fun, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, he made us different to be interesting, and I'm thankful for all those differences so that we can get along, because we don't all want to be exactly alike. That would be very boring, wouldn't it? Yeah. So when Jesus, he, when he prayed that we might be all one, he was praying that all of the pieces might be there, just like pieces in a puzzle, that they're all there to make one, okay? Because it's not good, and it would, it's not good if it's not all there. We're all important to God, aren't we? Yeah, and it's also important that we all get along and that we don't fight with each other. Jesus, he wants each of us because everyone is important. Did you know you're important to Jesus? You are. You are. Just like every piece of the puzzle is important, although this isn't near as important as you guys are. All right, so let's fold our hand and bow our heads, okay? Dear God, we thank you for Jesus and the prayers he has for us. In Jesus' name. Ready? Amen. All right, thank you. Midwestern pastor and author Sandra Herman writes, we are very used to our freedoms here in the USA. We can go to whatever church we want to, believe as our conscience leads, preach to others on the street corner, hand out tracts if that's our way of evangelizing, or we can skip church. We can be avowed atheists, agnostics, or following any number of religious persuasions, Buddhism, Hindu, Judaism, and Islam, to name only some of the biggest world's faiths. Pastor Herman says, sometimes in our country, we take it for granted that no one can be thrown in jail just for being a Baptist rather than a Catholic or vice versa. But in other parts of the world, there is no such freedom. Christians living in China, even though granted freedom of religion by their constitution, did in fact wind up in jail, especially during the 20th century cultural revolution. Pastor Herman says, When I was in China in 1988, I had the privilege of meeting an old priest who had been first jailed and then forced to do heavy labor in a factory. He told us about his time of forced labor and his prayers to God, asking why he was in the situation and wondering how he could survive. As he was in his 60s at the time of his arrest and was shifting 75 pound sacks of machine parts from the factory interior to the train platform and then into the boxcars for shipping. He said, all this time I asked God, Lord, they have taken away my Bible, my hymnal, my Bible study group. I am so alone and I dare not say much or they will beat me. Can't you help me, Lord? Then one day my foreman comes and says to me, you are free. Your time of service is over. I ask him, what does this mean? I am free. Free to do what? Oh, your time of service is over. You are free to worship as you wish. You are guaranteed this in the new constitution. I was certain this was not real. But he gives me my freedom papers and I'm allowed to leave the factory. Wonderful. 
So I come back here to Shanghai and I find this church where we are now standing and I come in and I begin to look around. He went on to tell us that he wandered through the church and he found a few Bibles and a few hymnals and, and some, old, some Bible study guides. He found the pews downstairs in the basement covered in dust and mold. And because of the heavy labor that had made him strong, he was able to pull them apart and clean them up. One day, three women walked in and asked what he was doing. He told them he intended that this church should offer services again and was cleaning it up to get it ready. They went home and came back with brooms and mops, buckets and rags and detergent. As they told the priest's story, others joined in their cleaning task. They found chairs and even found an organ and so set up the sanctuary. As they were putting the pews and chairs in place, one of the men asked the priest how many places he thought they would need for worship. The priest said, let's count on 75 for our first Sunday. They agreed that this was a, a, probably a, a reasonable expectation. But then as they were praying over the pews, one of the cleaners said, I think God will send us more. We need to set up more chairs. So they set up for 100. The priest confided in us that he was afraid that might be too ambitious, but he did not want to undermine the faith of those who were getting ready for worship, so he said nothing. They printed up posters to announce the new church and went out and posted them on kiosks and tacked them to the trees as was the custom there and the way they communicated at that particular place. The first thing that happened was that the very person who used to play the organ in this church walked back through the doors and volunteered to play for worship again. A few people who remembered choir in this congregation came in to practice for Sunday. It seemed as though everything might be the way they wanted it and needed it to have worship on Sunday. They printed up an order of worship. And on Sunday, they opened the doors and waited to see if they would have anyone showing up for church. The first people through the doors that Sunday praised the beauty of the stained glass window sparkling in the sunlight. They ran their hands over the freshly waxed pews. They found a place to sit and bowed their heads in prayer. At the appointed hour, People were still coming through the door. Every pew was filled. Every chair was taken. And those who arrived at the last minute leaned on the wall. 150 people showed up that Sunday. They prayed. They sang. They had a sermon. They were sent home with Bible verses to memorize. I won't do that to you. The next week, Nearly 200 people showed up. They began every meeting with scripture and study and prayer. Every choir rehearsal started with Bible study since the people had a hard time coming back in the middle of the week one extra day, so they did both on the same night. At the time we visited this church, says Pastor Herman, they had seven pastors one for the children one for the intermediate youth, one for the secondary school youth, one for visiting the aged and infirmed, and two for leading worship and study. And three of those pastors were women, and one of them led a women's ministry. They had three worship services each Sunday. They took communion once a month. But I find this humorous. But every time the choir met, for practice, they took communion because they felt they had a special meeting, ministry and they all realized they really needed a lot of extra help. Their congregation in 1988 was 750 members. The authorities wanted to stamp out Christianity as not being Chinese, the priest said. But God used our little bits of things to make a great ministry here. Pastor Herman concludes, like Paul and Silas, the priest was thrown in jail for what he believed. But also like Paul and Silas, 
his faithfulness was rewarded with a rich harvest. In our gospel today, Jesus knows that it would not be easy for Paul and Silas and that it would not be easy for that old priest in China and that it will not be easy for us today. Jesus yet those knows that it can be challenging to share the gospel. That's why Jesus prays for all disciples and for those who will come to believe through their words in Jesus Christ. This high priestly prayer is longer than what we had in our gospel this morning, verses 20 through 26. It actually has 19 more verses. It starts at verse 1. In the next chapter, like Paul and Silas, Jesus also is arrested. As Jesus prepares to secure our forgiveness and salvation, Jesus prays for His disciples and all future disciples. As Jesus is literally only hours from flogging and crucifixion to pay for our sins. It is amazing that even knowing this, Jesus makes time to pray for all of His disciples, including Paul and Silas, including an old priest and everyday Christians in China, and including you and me. Yes, for me. My grandmother Williams wanted me to know that. After she passed about four decades ago, she left a note that I was to get this large print New Testament, which I had given to her as a gift when I was 16. As I got this back, throughout the Bible, between the pages, she has placed devotional readings and prayers that appropriately match up with the Bible verses on those pages. Inserted there by herself for me. She told me she'd done that. And I found these to be insightful words of faith shared with me still today by my grandmother four decades later. And in the middle of Jesus' high priestly prayer that includes our words in the gospel today, my grandmother simply put a photograph of me at age four. Even though she was not living when I finally became a pastor, I think somehow she knew. To me, that says my grandmother simply wants me to know that Jesus was praying even for me and for all those who would come to believe in Christ through my words. Let me say, that is a very humbling thought for me as your pastor. Yet the humbling reality is that this is the same calling also for us as a congregation. We come here as individuals, but we are one in Jesus Christ. Unified in mission, fitting together like puzzle pieces. We are to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ, who as God in the flesh died for our sins on the cross and rose on the third day to proclaim victory over the grave so that we also have the promise of rising on the last day to enter life with God forever. It is humbling to think that God did that for each one of us. It's humbling to think that in the few hours before hanging on that cross, that Jesus took time to pray for His disciples like us. And for those who will come to believe in Jesus through our words. Jesus prays for us because our Redeemer knows it was not, is not, and will never be easy in this world to be Christ's disciples who proclaim the gospel and live as God's children. 
It was not easy for Paul and Silas, nor for that old priest in China, nor for Martin Luther. It is not easy for us today when the prevailing culture often does not support being active in a congregation. It is a world with so many other options, with so many other religions that are officially called religion, but also there are unofficial religions. If people allow themselves to overfocus on money, possessions, sports, entertainment, and the like. Not that any of these are bad in themselves, they're a gift from God. But these can become a religion of sorts when they become the primary focus in life instead of faith in God. Also, it will not be easy for future generations to believe and share the gospel. That's why even though it is not directly connected to the gospel message, it is also important that like that old priest and the everyday Christians in Pastor, Pastor Herman's story, that we also make sure that we look to the future, that we provide a place and a facility so that future generations will come to believe. That's why we are looking forward, forward thinking with our recent renovations so that this facility will continue to be, as Martin Luther called it, God's mouth house. Not mouse, mouth. To hear the word. To be spoken to children yet to be born. That's why we are looking forward on how modern communication methods are rapidly and radically changing like has not happened since the innovation in the printing press that reshaped communication 500 years ago. People who study this says we're re rewriting how the brain functions with communication, and the last time we did it was during the Reformation with the printing press. Yet Martin Luther and others also used the technologies of that day to spread the gospel. Yes, Jesus knows it will not be easy. That's why as he faces the cross for us, Jesus makes time to pray for his disciples of all time and all those who will come to believe in him by their words. That's why our focus cannot only be on telling the story for those who come weekly to sit here and know it best. But we must also tell the story for some have never heard. Yes, Jesus prays for us and for those who will come to believe through our words and that we may be one. Amen. Please turn to page 9 in the bulletin, or if you want the full melody, hymn number 661. Our sermon hymn is I Love to Tell the Story, and I invite you to stand.
glad you know that story in that song. <laughs> you sang it, even with parts missing. <laughs> we continue with the Apostles' Creed. We have been made God's people through our baptism into Christ, living together in trust and hope. We confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Set free from sin and death and nourished by the word of truth, we join in prayer for all of God's creation. We pray for all who long for a word of truth and for the a radical grace that flows from the cross. Inspire congregations to freely and boldly proclaim your love for all people with persistence and hope. Work through the ministry of your people, especially all disciples and congregations throughout the world and the ELCA, Elroy Lutheran Parish, and the Bureau County Food Pantry. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. We pray for your creation for mountains, rivers, streams, cities, homesteads, and neighborhoods. Write in our hearts a new love and care for creation. Give us the will to curb wasteful habits and to hold accountable those who neglect the vulnerable. Bless all newborns, especially Revy. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. We pray for all who aspire to public office and for all who will vote at local polling places. Pour wisdom and understanding upon all who govern so that communities of justice and peace may thrive. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for all who long for healing in mind, body, or spirit, especially Jim, Steve, Peter, Shirley, Doris, Shirley, Alice, Jane, George, Paul, Fran, Terry, Kathy, Dick, Judy, Irma, Jim, Leanne, Porter, Dana, Mona, Deb, Scott, Braden, Ruth, Gary, Lisa, Loretta, Gail, Elizabeth, Sarah, Rita, Beth, Tim, Savannah, Samantha, Lewis, Tom, Emmy, Harlan, and all victims of disasters and 
war and violence, especially in the recent shootings and those impacted by our pandemic in any way. Strengthen hospitals, clinics, counseling centers, nursing homes, and recovery centers to be holy spaces of renewal that all might live the abundant life you intend. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. We pray for all who seek to grow in faith and love of you. Guide teaching and learning in confirmation, small groups, Sunday school, youth groups, schools, seminaries, and universities. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. We give thanks for all the saints and reformers who have gone before us, who dwell in your holy habitation. Give us courage through their example to challenge unjust systems and work toward life-giving reformation. Comfort the grieving family of Judy. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. Confident that you hear us, O God, we boldly place our prayers into your hands. Through Jesus Christ, our truth and life. Amen. Amen. You may be seated now as we receive our tithes and offerings to give to God for the work of ministry that begins here and goes across God's creation. Please stand. Let us pray. Living God, you gather the wolf and the lamb to feed together in your peaceable reign, and you welcome us all at your table. Reach out to us through this meal and show us your wounded and risen body, that we may be nourished and believe in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, her duty and her joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures and with all angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Communion is by continual flow. The ushers will form a single line in the middle aisle. You come to me for the bread, and then people on the side here will go over to, to get the little cup of white grape juice or red wine, put the empty cup in the bowl to return your seat in the outside aisle. We'll alternate side to side in the aisle to form the...
Let us pray. We give you thanks, generous God, for in this bread and cup we have tasted the new heaven and earth where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection, that through our lives all may know life in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Volunteers are needed for camera and sound. We will show you what's involved. Sunday mornings, we will meet June 12th and 19th after the service. No commitment is required, and it will be fun. <laughs> Money put in the penny prayer jar helps support Bureau County Food Pantry through June 26th. Each dollar donated buys $10 in groceries through the Riverbend Food Bank. You can also donate non-perishable food items or home supplies with a current expiration date, which can be placed in the food pantry box that's found in the narthex. drive through communion will be June 5th at 1045 in the church parking lot. Bureau County planning meetings for Bureau County Work Camp will be June 1st and June 15th at 6.30 p.m. here at St. Matthew's for work camp that will be held June 26th through July 2nd. Volunteers are needed to provide drinks and snacks at the work sites. We will have kids there. A sign-up sheet can be found in the narthex, or you can contact St. Matthew's office if you can help with this mission. It's always super fun to get those treats when you're on a work camp site just from experience. All right, let's see. Sunday school and confirmation are now on summer break. But St. Matthew's Youth and Family is hosting an H2O Olympics. Water, volleyball, and baseball are, will be included in other water games. Tuesday, it will be Tuesday, June 21st from 1030 to 1230 at St. Matthew's. Bring a towel change of clothes, and a disposable lunch. Please let me know if you will be attending. Thank you. When you come to that plan, coming to get wet. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Water, water, water. <laughs> Lots of water. All right. 
Lutheran World Relief, they are collecting winter linens, flannel sheets, and pillowcases. Please place these in the tub marked winter linens found in the narthex. Also, a substitute pianist is needed to play at 9 a.m. service on the fourth Sunday of the month. You can email Megan Olson, our music director, or contact the office. See, I have a lot of announcements and my pages all like all over the place. Come celebrate our renovation Sunday, June 26th after worship with cupcakes and drinks. And Pastor Scott Schmidt will be on sabbatical July 1st through September 30th. During this time, Pastor Jean Vincent will okay, be actually, our... I got I'm sharing that. Are you sh yes. I'm stealing your thunder. Sorry. All okay. right. I will let you go. All right. Thank you, everybody. Obviously, Catherine and I didn't get a chance to talk, and I noticed, Barb, we need to change the announcement slide. We, we have Lorraine who plays the fourth Sunday. We're looking for a substitute pianist when we have five Sundays. That's just the fifth. I got it backwards. Never mind. COVID fog. <laughs> well, I wanted to sh share this. Sorry about that, Catherine. We, in 2020, um, the leaders here at St. Matthew's and I began talking about a sabbatical, which is often recommended in the sixth or seventh year of ministry partnership to kind of guarantee a long-term pastorate. And for us, my, I would have been here seven years in 2020. And if you remember 2020, do you remember that year? I didn't think it was a very good year to walk away. And so I wanted to stay here. That's when we were having all kinds of things to deal with. So the plan was then to consider doing that in 2021 last year. And one of the issues that we've run into is that um, there is a little bit of a shortage of supply pastors and interim pastors right now. We absolutely could not find anybody to cover for the three months of sabbatical. And I was not just going to walk away. But as you're excited, and I'm glad, I'm extremely pleased to share that Pastor Gene Vincent, who once was a member here, went on to a seminary and has served at First Lutheran. He just retired July of last year. Um, that we, the council and I have been working on an agreement with Pastor Gene, who will be our interim pastor um, when I'm on sabbatical July, August, and September. He's excited about this. Um, and, I, and some of you are too. When we couldn't find anybody last year, someone said, why not Gene Vincent? And I said, well, we're working on things. So you, many of you thought he was a good choice. Pastor Gene will be two-thirds time. He won't be full-time. So he'll lead worship and preach on Sunday morning. He'll cover pastoral care issues and funerals and baptisms during that three months. He'll meet with council and committees. And I'm going to say it this way. This, this is not just my sabbatical. Because if a sabbatical is done correctly, and Gene's very much in the same mindset of this, it's also our sabbatical. This congregation has thrived in times in between pastoral calls and learning how to grow themselves. So we'll do that for three months. And so Pastor Gene will help all of you kind of discern where we might want to be headed when I return start conversations when I return in October. So you will be called upon to be thinking also while I'm studying and reading and fishing and biking and catching a Sabbath. So the newsletter article has more details and it's similar to what I put last year and thought it might happen, but there is a lot of revised information in that newsletter article for this coming sabbatical. Also just know that in mid-June we will be posting a brief video on what the sabbatical means. So with that, I wanted to share that. And So if you have other questions, call me. Please turn to the benediction in the bulletin, and I invite you to stand. We're on page 17. God, the author of life, Christ, the living cornerstone, and the life-giving spirit of adoption, bless you now and forever. Our sending hymn is on the bottom of page 17 or in the hymn book at 855.
continue on page 18. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace. Tell what God has done.